Hi there, I'm Andrew Gaughan and I am a knitwear designer and this is my monthly podcast where I do a bit of show and tell about all the different things I've been up to since last month and I just generally chat about all things knitting related. If you've watched my podcast before, welcome back and if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy getting a peek into what I've been up to lately. Uh, first, give you an overview of what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to talk about the sweater I'm wearing, which I finished over the past month. I'm going to be talking about a new cowl design that I finished two samples of, an additional beanie I made. I'm looking at all of them to help remember. I have them all piled here, ready to go. Um, and then I'm going to be talking quite a bit about the current design I have going. I basically have two different versions I started and I'll talk about why I am discarding the first version and going with the second one. Um, and then I also have the yarn for my next sweater project out and I'm going to talk about my ideas for that. I also spent quite a bit of time this uh, past month traveling. I went and stayed with family and went to several events up in Rhinebeck surrounding New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, so I kind of had a very different month than usual, but I did my best to still have different projects going on while I was traveling. Um, I also went for a long weekend up to Michigan to see, uh, to attend a wedding for my partner's family friend, which was very fun. Um, but I kind of had a very different uh, schedule than my normal routine um, but I'll tell you a bit about some of that at the end of this podcast um, also I want to let you know the neighbor is I guess using his lawnmower to pick up leaves I tried waiting like an hour for it to be done and it is not done and I don't know when it possibly will be done. So I did a little test video and it didn't sound too loud in the backgrounds, but if that is very audible to you, I apologize. I just, I couldn't wait till tomorrow and I think that this is gonna be going on for a long time. Um, but like I said, I just went ahead with it because in the test video, it sounded pretty, pretty quiet. Okay, so first of all, let me talk all about this sweater I'm wearing. This is the second sample of my Funfetti pullover, um, which is a raglan that is knit top down in all over color work. As you can see, um, this is worked in a DK weight yarn. I wor am working with Brooklyn Tweed on this design. This is their DK weight base arbor. Um, it comes in a really beautiful range of different colors. So I will show you my first sample. I knit this obviously on a light base and what I did for this sample is I used a variety of different scrap yarns um, including both DK yarn, weight yarns, and fingering yarns held double to do a scrappy random stripe sequence um, and I'm really really happy with how this one came out but I both wanted to show what a um, regular stripe sequence. So this is the same four colors repeated um, in the same in the same order over the whole sweater. And then also just to show how different um, the same simple motif can look on a light color base with darker contrast colors. Excuse me. Versus on a dark con dark base with light contrast colors. Um, and what I really liked about how these colors ended up is that um so just starting with a really dark main color gives you a lot of options for what you can do to have high contrast contrast colors but i like that these three colors this like mustardy color teal type color and salmony color are all high contrast but not like extreme opposite ends of the spectrum, but then this really light um, sea glass type color, it's almost like a really light version of this color, is super high contrast. So I almost feel like the lines of that color kind of glow. They really pop out. Um, I was really pleased with that effect, uh, but there's a lot of possibilities you could do just 
two colors of stripes. A lot of my testers are actually doing rainbow stripes, which makes me so happy. Um, someone's doing like really neon rainbow colors, which is really cool. Uh, there's lots of possibility just if you're gonna go with a scrappy random sequence, just all kinds of different color schemes. Like you could stay to all cool tones or all warm colors or all neutral colors. Um, so I just really like uh, a design that can use a pretty simple motif because all this is is one by one color work stripes um, to create a lot of different iterations, possibility, room for play. Um, and this is going to be coming out December 14th, so not too far away now. And if you're not already on my newsletter, that is the best place to hear about my releases as soon as they're out. And also the only place you're gonna get that release discount code. Usually what I've been doing lately is I'll have the release on Thursday and then Thursday through Sunday, there'll be a discount code that all newsletter subscribers can use if they wanna get that pattern and mint their own. Um, and then you can find the link to my newsletter in the description box below. Um, and one more thing I wanted to show you about this, I might have shown before, is that using this many colors naturally leaves a lot of ends to deal with. And this sweater uses a technique where you braid all those ends together so they do not need to be individually woven in. And because this pullover has positive ease in the arm and the body, that braid isn't, it's down here and over here, so it's not even touching your body. If you had something like with zero or negative ease, this probably wouldn't maybe be ideal because it'd be right up against your skin, but there's plenty of room. I never ever think about that braid being in there. Um, and I'm gonna have a tutorial for that when the pattern comes out. I was really hoping to have it already. Uh, and my plan was because this sample was the first time I was ever doing the technique. I wanted to practice with this sample and then record the tutorial as I did the technique on this sample. But unfortunately I ended up finishing this at like the very last minute before Rhinebeck and I was already staying at my mom's house and uh, finding a setup where it's comfortable and with the lighting and angle good to do a tutorial has been kind of a struggle for me. Um, already, you know, I don't think I have like excellent results, but I have suitable results here. But uh, if doing that in my own home office was challenging enough, I really did not want to try to record a tutorial at a different location. So what I'm actually going to do for the tutorial is I'm going to take one of the ends on this sweater and on one of the braids and undo it and then redo it for the tutorial. So. Uh, but I'm going to record that next week, so it'll definitely be out by the time the pattern is released. The pattern includes a written description already for the testers of what to do, and I did link to someone else's tutorial on how to do that technique, but I kind of have a couple additional points and tips about how I found um, it was best to do it for this specific design that aren't included in that video tutorial, so that's why I'm going to re-record my own. Um, and I think that's all that I need to say about that sweater at this time. Keep an eye out for that release. Some people have already told me uh, they're eagerly awaiting the release to make their own, which always makes me so happy. And it makes me extra excited to do the whole release process. And I know that people are out there that really want to knit it. Um, so for my other finished objects from this past month, I have two samples of a new cowl design that I have made. This is not only my first cowl design, but actually the first cowls I have ever knit or worn. I love scarves um, and I always like scarves tightly wrapped around. And I was thinking that this design, I was gonna do one of these samples as a cowl and one as a scarf. Um, but then I realized knitting it because this is double thick and all over color work. Um, so if this was a scarf, you need to do a lot more to make it a scarf length. So you'd probably have to knit this about three times as long. Um, and I did not have enough yarn or time and energy for that. And I 
really feel like the cowls give all of the utility of a scarf. Um, I'm definitely interested in knitting scarves, but I think I just would not do all over color work two-sided for an entire scarf. Um, but anyway, I used the opportunity of making two different samples, again, to show different color combinations. And then I actually work different sizes this time. Um, I would try these on, I'll, I'll try it on real quick, but I'm gonna show you nicer pictures I took. Oh, I kind of actually really like the, the color is like, goes surprisingly well with this. I love colorful things, but I'm not one to usually be like, lots of colors in my sweater and lots of colors in my accessory, but they actually happen to be very suitable. So maybe I would wear these two together. Okay, well, I'll, I'll show them to you like this. Um, so it has a twist and when I'm just holding it, you can really clearly see it's flat and then a twist. But then when it's worn, um, because of how the fabric actually lays, you don't really specifically see the twist at one point unless you really like try to make a, a point of it like this. But really when you just throw it on, it just makes it so that it feels naturally wrapped around your neck, which is great. This is the size small. And so I made the sizes intending to be close to the neck fits for actual warmth and practicality. I know that some people like to have like a long drooping cowl like this, but for me, what I really want, what if I'm gonna put something on around my neck, it's only gonna be because it's cold and I want warmth. Um, I'm not one to use something like that to accessorize unless I really want the function of it. Um, so this small is intended to be actually snug and around your neck, not tight at all, um, but so that you'd really feel that warmth. And I feel like I wouldn't personally just go around wearing this in a sweater. I feel like this for me is perfect when you have a jacket on and then it's covering that jacket opening. Um, so I'm not gonna put a jacket on right now to show you, but I'm sure that you can imagine it. And the size small samples I did in six colors. So I did a rainbow of pink, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, purple, and then record, repeated that same six color sequence um, over and over. And I originally, um, I believe I showed this in my last podcast. I originally started this and I was gonna do a random order. Um, and I, I feel like I keep thinking that I love the like random look but I think that there has to be certain things happening for that to be true. A lot of times I'm like, it's too random. <laughs> I like a little bit of order. So I decided to rip that back and start over and just repeat the same color sequence. And I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Um, and I also felt like it actually made it much more calm knit because I didn't have to, once I decided on my color order I just knew every time I started a new uh, row of triangles exactly what to do and I didn't have to think about it and I appreciated that especially while I was working on that while traveling and then this is my second sample and I knit this in just a two color version to show that possibility um and this is a size medium Again, you can see the twist just makes it lay really naturally. I'm really, really happy with how it lays. And it's like this nice thick fabric. There's kind of um, how it's two-sided. It stays pretty much folded in the same place, but the two layers of fabric kind of give it extra room to puff up and take up space and feel cozy. Um, so this is the size medium. And as you can see, it's a bit more relaxed. Um, I think what I would do is I would wear this size small that's closer to the neck more if I was going to be out all day on a hike and I really wanted the whole time that next to neck warmth. And I think that this medium would be better if I was doing like a day in the city in the winter where you're kind of going indoors, outdoors. You could kind of shove it up more around your neck when you're in the cold outdoors and then not feel like it's... Um, uh, 
like you're getting too stuffy when you go inside. And then of course, um, well, the pattern includes three lengths. So this is a small and medium, and then there's a large, but all you're doing is knitting this tube and then seaming it at the end. So you can knit this to any length you want. You could easily make it longer if that is your preference. Um, I think actually the trying them on was able to show you pretty well how they look, but real quick, I'll show you my cute photos I took. So, um, this is good because it shows you on a plain sweater. There's a lot going on with the sweater right now. And there's that colorful sample. Okay. So other things that I wanted to tell you about this design are that. So this color work motif at the widest point is seven stitches wide, which ordinarily you would want to catch a float when you were getting that wide. And that is four out of the Basically, that would mean 50% of the rounds would involve catching floats, which I don't mind doing, but it definitely, it's just that little extra step that makes it um, take a bit longer. It kind of stops me from getting as fully in the flow. But because of the way this cowl is designed, that the floats are completely trapped within the cowl, there's no possible way to see them. There is no need whatsoever to catch the floats, so you can do the entire um, color work motif, leaving those long floats, and then they will be safe and sound inside the cowl. Um, and I was very happy about that. It kind of opened up this motif as being more possible, because I think I would have been more hesitant to use a motif that would include so much float catching if it weren't for that case. Um, and then I was, I was thinking, I was like, do you need to do the float catching for tension reasons? Or is it only so that you don't catch the float on your fingers or jewelry or something? Um, and from everything I could tell, trying to look that up, it is just because of the inconvenience of the long floats. It's not a tension thing. And then I was able to find I was very happy with my tension. All you need to do is be sure that you're um, leaving those floats nice and long and that they're at least as long as the finished motif is gonna be. Um, I got a little bit of footage of pre-blocking and the blocking process and post-blocking on this one that I'm gonna try to make into a reel. Um, but with all of our color work motif like this, they were quite crinkly looking before blocking but just steam blocking flattened it right out and opened it up beautifully. Um, and then I include a note in the pattern that because this is a cowl, it's one of the few times I would uh, tell a knitter that it's totally fine not to swatch, but if you still wanna make sure that your tension is on track to be nice and you don't know if the bunching is gonna come out entirely with blocking, you can just block once you have a good starting chunk of the cowl and make sure that you like how the blocked version looks and then you can confidently continue on and finish that all up without having to swatch. <laughs> and so I don't know if I mentioned but obviously something happened to get all those floats happening floats um hidden in there and that is seaming. So this is started with a, or grafting. Um, this is started with a provisional cast on and then it's undone at the end. And the two loops are grafted together. And I'm honestly impressed. I feel like it's way more invisible than I had even hoped for. Like, can you tell where that was? So. Um, let me find it on this one. So in this one, I did the grafting, but I did not do duplicate stitch on top of the graft 
to make it completely match the motif and the rest. And I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see at the intersection of this pink and purple triangles, there's a bit here where the pink goes all the way across, whereas in the normal rows, the yellow triangle goes all the way up to touch the blue triangle. Here, the yellow and blue triangles don't quite touch. I would never, I would never think anyone would ever notice that, but I included a tutorial on this one. I honestly don't know if I can find it on this one because, let me see if I can. Okay, I think that this is the, yeah. Okay, you can see these stitches are a tiny bit bigger because I kind of left them loose. So here I did the graft and then I went back and duplicate stitched these final stitches. So in the white, for whatever reason, a couple of them, you can kind of see they look a little extra big. And then I also duplicate stitched these yellow stitches. So yeah, you, maybe you can kind of tell right there, but honestly, get that distance away. Would you ever notice? I think the answer is no. Um, but that's just an optional. If you are really, if you're someone who likes that little detail, get it totally invisible looking. Um, I included directions and a tutorial on exactly how to do that duplicate stitch. Um, and I am very, very happy with these. I am so excited about all the tester versions that people are already starting on. There are quite a few people who are doing a version that's like the two um, color cowl where they have one constant con uh, main color, but then for the contrast colors, they're using a different one each time. Um, and I think that's gonna be a really cool effect. I think at least one person is doing a rainbow version uh, like I did. And there's a lot. Um, someone I saw who was already a good bit started is doing like a dark and light blue. And I really like that like monochromatic look. Um, there are plenty of high contrast, but just two different shades of the same color. It's really cool use of this design. So um, I'm excited to see all their versions and how that turns out. This pattern is going to be released in February is my plan, probably early February. Uh, but I think that will be a good time for releasing a winter accessory uh, because it's too early, I think, to be starting on any really spring or summery type designs. But it's um, for an accessory, you could still purchase that pattern in February and have plenty of time to knit it and wear it while it's still cold um, before it starts warming up for the spring. So that was my idea with that. And then that's going to be my final um, really like cold season pattern for the year. And then what I will show you next, um, my work in progress is a sweater, but it's more of a layering spring sweater. Okay. Um, so I have another finished object. <laughs> Excuse me. Eek. If you've been watching my podcast, you've already seen so many versions of this pattern. This is my simple two by two rib pattern that is called the essential beanie i knit up six samples because the pattern calls for it has instructions for six different yarn weights so you could essentially pick up any yarn or combine any two yarns and knit this pattern with it and one of my ideas for the use of the pattern would be that it would be a great option when you just have a single skein that you either purchased at a special event or you just wanted to try out or is maybe a little outside your normal color zone or anything like that. So um, I used it for exactly this use. I got this very beautiful skein of naturally dyed yarn at Rhinebeck that has these beautiful little rainbow tweed speckles that I was just enamored with, um, but I didn't have a specific plan for. Um, and I was like, you know what that means? perfect beanie and to use up as much of the yarn as I could I did a nice double fold beanie um, which makes this extra thick and warm 
um, and in their instructions included for the length and weight of um, or grams of yarn you would need to do the double folded brim in the instructions. And this is, um, I just want to make sure I have all the yarn information right. Uh, so this is from Flora Adora Fibers and it's their Donegal Tweed DK base. So they have a beautiful variety of different naturally dyed colors that all have these same beautiful rainbow speckles. I just think they're so cute. Um, and I think what I really like about them is that it's, they're very visible, but they're not, they're not like aggressively visible, if that makes any sense to you. Like it's kind of a fun, but subtle effect, all the different colors of those little tweedy bits. Um, and Flora Adora Fibers is run by Sharon, who I got to meet at her booth pretty briefly. I just introduced myself and talked to her for a minute, but that was really cool because when I was first starting designing, there was a chat group that I was a part of for different people starting operating fiber businesses to share, ask each other questions, um, chat about different business fiber things. And Sharon of Floridor Fibers was in that group back then. Um, and I remember reading some of her posts and some of her contributions to the group. So it was really cool to see her in person. At, um, I don't know if I said Rhinebeck, I've been in the habit of calling all of the events from the New York Sheep and Wool weekend Rhinebeck, but this was actually at Wool and Folk. Um, I went to, this year I went to Indian Tangled Wool and Folk and, and New York Sheep and Wool, the main Rhinebeck event. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about that all a bit more later. Um, but yes, I was so happy to get this special skein and have another beanie added to my collection. And I just love it. Okay, so those are the things that I have finished in this past month. This sweater, two cowls, and the hat. Um, which now that I'm looking at all, I'm like, that's a good bit of knitting, but it felt over the course of the month like I was not getting a lot done or a lot of knitting time because of all my different traveling. Um, so it's kind of reassuring to look at it all. I feel like I, that's, a, that's a good bit. I did some knitting. Um, and now I'm going to launch into talking about my current whip, which I am tentatively calling the Haw Creek Pullover. Hall Creek is the neighborhood of Asheville that I live in and it's right by the Blue Ridge Parkway and it's a really sweet place to walk around. Everyone's really friendly and I've enjoyed living here. Um, and Hall Creek is also the creek that runs along it uh, through the neighborhood. Um, and there's a really cute spot by a little coffee shop and restaurant in the neighborhood where you can walk along the creek and it's very sweet. and. So I'm calling this the Hall Creek Pullover. Um, I'm kind of picturing this pullover being the perfect thing for throwing on during transitional times of the year. It is going to be cropped and quite v-neck. Um, so I'm really picturing it as a layering piece that you could put on over a dress or even a button down or like probably the main thing I'll wear for is wearing pants and some kind of tank top and throwing this on over. Um, so my original vision, well, first of all, I'll show you the stitch pattern that I'm using. I'm using a garter rib, which I love. I'm so, I thought that this yarn would be a great match. I'll tell you about the yarn in a second. Um, but it's just perfect. I feel like this yarn is the perfect thing for the stitch pattern. So this is columns of stockinette alternated with columns of garter. If you have seen my um, Keone pullover that is worked in broken rib, it's actually composed of the same two types of stitches, but for the broken rib, it's just one column of stockinette, one column of garter. Um, whereas, you know, a normal rib would be stockinette, reverse stockinette. The garter 
makes it so that it looks extra textured in the garter columns and then the stockinette and reverse stockinette being um, opposites and how they pull make it so that a normal rib wants to do that scrunching up which is great there's lots of times when that's exactly what you want but this stitch pattern um well it does want to scrunch up a bit before blocking this is the swatch is blocked and it basically completely lays flat um it just relaxes out and it's not being gathered but it's having that textured stripe look and i finished the swatch off with a i-cord bind off and i'm just thrilled how this edging looks i really wanted the main thing to be the texture um so i wanted really minimal edging but i wanted something that looked very finished too i didn't want it to just end um abruptly and then i didn't really want to transition it into another kind of rib i didn't think that would look right but i'm really happy with how just this simple i-cord bind off looks the like stockinette and the i-cord bind off i think almost complements the stockinette stripes so how this will work is these two stripes are gonna come up and split for the v-neck. Um, and so it's gonna add some extra detail where the stripes of the stitch pattern are going to follow the shape of the sweater. So I'm very, very excited about this. And let me now tell you about this yarn. Oh, I have a stain of it that I didn't kick up yet. This is the farmer's, um, if you've been here before, you know. I just don't think, I know about the face thing, but it just never wants to focus, even if I do that. Um, but this is the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Recollect Sport, and the color that I'm using is called Pretty Shield. It's this gorgeous deep red color. And this yarn is dyed on a blend of black and white rambouillet wool, so that the original base, when it's undyed, is a steely gray and it's over dyed in a gorgeous range of colors but it makes it so each one of these colors is really rich and saturated and it's happened so many times that i was like oh this yarn base I'm, this yarn line i'm seeing like every color i just love them like i love the depth and richness of these colors and then i found out it was dyed on a gray base so i really love the effect that that creates um, I know this is a popular yarn, so you may have seen it before. Uh, this is the Sport Weight. I used the same yarn for my Sport Weight sample of the Essential Beanie, but I used the Porch Pumpkin colorway. Um, okay, so my original plan was for this to be a top-down raglan. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen or even participated in my a uh, little poll survey I did in my stories about would you as a knitter prefer to knit something that is a raglan that is top down and quite complicated or bottom up and quite simple and we got 70% saying top down and complicated and only 30% saying bottom up and simple but I realized that not only would top down in this stitch pattern be complicated, it would be, for what I'm willing to do, impossibly complicated, and for what I think it would be enjoyable for a knitter to do, impossibly complicated. And I was, I wrote up the whole pattern um, for my size, graded it out what would happen for different sizes, and knit a substantial portion of the yoke. And the thing is, it's it's definitely knittable. So this is how it was looking, this yoke. So this is being worked and this up here would be the v-neck. Those two bits dangling would join to form the v-neck. So you can absolutely knit this pattern top down the issue is that in these front sections you're starting with zero stitches and then you'll have one stitch and you have to get down here 
just like two inches into the pattern before you have a good bit of this stitch pattern available to look at. And to make these instructions workable, I have to pretty quickly get all the sizes to just working in pattern, which means they've established enough of this stitch pattern and I explain how to do it, that they are gonna extrapolate as these increases are made, how these new stitches are gonna be increased into the pattern. So if a row ended on knit, 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 and there's one more stitch, you know the next row is gonna be knit, 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 purl, and etc. So the shoulders and back, it's not a problem. I can set everybody up for a couple rows and then set them loose, say, this is your increased schedule, work the increases in pattern. But that really doesn't work for these front beds because I have to be giving line by line specific instructions for quite a long time before the knitter even has enough of the pattern existing to see how to increase it in pattern. And all of the sizes are doing different rates of increases for both the raglans and the v-neck. So in a single round to be explaining, this is exactly how to work the front sections. This is how much the v-neck is being increased and this is how much the raglan lines are being increased is possible but i would basically have to write out line by line instructions for 20 lines for nine sizes every stitch explaining what to do and that would be introducing the possibility for a lot of errors when i can't i of course have test knitters but um, I like for the instructions to stay as close as possible between the sizes, even though people do rates differently, so that I know when I'm checking the pattern for understandability when I knit it, that I know that will translate to the other sizes, but that just totally broke down. Um, and it's not fun. It's not fun for every round for a long time. You have to pay extremely close attention. and. Um, if you're not familiar with how a bottom-up pattern would work, a bottom-up pattern would solve this pattern, this problem 100% because you would start out with a large section at the bottom that you worked in the body or the sleeves, and then decreasing in pattern is very simple because all you're doing is taking stitches away. You already understand how the pattern's happening here, and you just have to take stitches away instead of from nothing creating the pattern. So, um, and if you're not a firm proponent of top-down or understand the top-down versus bottom-up preferences, why many people have a strong preference for top-down is so that they can try it on as they go. And if you're not as confident in knowing what size or lengths are going to be ideal for you that's a huge bonus because you can try it on to make sure you like the length before binding off um whereas if you try it on bottom up you have a tube but it's kind of hard to know exactly where that tube is going to sit whereas if you start at the neckline you say i know exactly where the neckline is going to be um so i'm basically trying on a almost complete sweater when you're deciding how long to knit the body and arms. And I understand the benefit of that, but I really want to be able to do more complex. And it's not that the stitch pattern is complex, it's just that it takes place over a six stitch width. So I wanna be able to do bigger patterns and raglans. And I think that for that to happen, they need to be bottom up. So this stitch motif is only two stitches wide. So I have to have, this is the same exact thing of doing a top down raglan, but I don't need many stitches before I can tell the knitter to work in pattern because the stitch motif is so small. But when the stitch motif is six stitches wide, a knitter pretty much needs at least six stitches to understand how to then make it bigger. So anyway, I've talked about that all a long time. 
Um, this is these are the things that I spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, so hopefully that's of interest to you somewhat. Um, but all right, so this is the sweater I'm not doing. Let's talk about what I am doing. I just didn't rip this out because I've been looking back at it and I'm kind of, for a while I was like, maybe I'll just go back and make it work, but it's not happening. I just haven't ripped it out yet. So I am now knit the shoulders and back for my new version, which is going to be a drop shoulder sweater, um, but it's gonna have these saddle shoulder panels. So it's going to achieve the same thing of having the lines of the motif follow the V and meet and go flow nicely into the body. And the same thing as the stripes starting at the neck and going all the way down the sleeve to the shoulder. So you'll have the different directions of the pattern all flowing nicely. Um, but so what is gonna happen now in this pattern is the knitter is gonna knit two rectangles of the motif and then place the stitches on hold and those are going to sit at the shoulders so this is going like this so these are going over the shoulder and then these stitches will be picked up here for the sleeve and these stitches will run uninterrupted over the whole length of the sleeve and then I've already picked up the stitches on one side and worked the back panel. So I'm working a size B, which has really, really minimal underarm shaping. And then there'll be a bit of sleeve stitches cast on at the underarm as well. Um, the larger sizes to keep the width proportional, but make the bust circumference get larger, there's going to be more of that underarm shaping and stitches cast on. So that makes this a modified drop shoulder pattern. And then what I'm going to be working on today is picking up stitches here and then working the v-neck and shoulder shaping until I meet at the bottom of the yoke and I can join for working in the round. And then the body and the sleeves will be worked pretty much exactly the same as if it was a raglan. Um, so it's gonna make the fit a bit different, but because I'm including um, shoulder shaping, so the short rows worked at the top here to get that diagonal line to slope with the shoulders. Um, and then there's the, there'll be like a good bit of um, neck opening where the shoulders are. It's gonna overall be not that different of a fit from how the raglan version would have been. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. And then what makes this much simpler is that, well, for the back, you cast on a good bit in pattern and then just increases pattern as you do the um, um, German short rows for the shoulder shaping. But in the front here, we're still gonna have the problem of there's v-neck shaping on one side, short row shaping on the other, and establishing working in pattern. But that's all the knitter is gonna be doing. All you're gonna be doing is working this little bit. There's no work this bit, and then the shoulders, and then the back, and then the shoulders. Um, since that's not happening all simultaneously, it's gonna be a lot easier to instruct the knitter how to do. And it's gonna be a really short period of knitting before you're like, okay, I'm working in pattern. I get what's going on. Increasing in pattern is going nicely. So for this design, I chose that um, I wanted to prioritize doing it top down so people could try it on as they went. And that's what I decided to do to go along with that. Um, and then I think for a top down raglan, I just have to think about how, um, like if you just had a central panel of cables or something, but then this is all stockinette or seed stitch, you wouldn't be running into that issue. Um, or of course if it's all stockinette and then you're just doing stripes or something, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, so in the future, if I want to do a more complex stitch pattern in a raglan, I'm going to choose to do a bottom up, but then I'm gonna support that with some videos explaining exactly how to 
choose your size and know that you can confidently knit body lengths and sleeve lengths that you'll be happy with because that seems to be the main barrier um, for people, the 70% of people who don't want to do bottom up. Um, and so in my design work, I spend a lot of time thinking about how am I going to get a final object that someone will love, but also a process that someone will enjoy knitting. And sometimes that kind of gets me into an impossible position because uh, to get the most ideal fit and a interesting design, a lot of times something's gonna be included that some knitter doesn't like, you know? Um, so no pattern is ever going to make every knitter 100% happy to knit because some people don't like knitting ribs. Some people don't like knitting twisted stitches. Some people don't like purling. Some people don't like increasing in pattern at all. Or um, I could go on and on. I'm sure for everything that exists in knitting, there's someone who doesn't like it. Um, there's some people that don't like just working stockinette forever, which would might be someone else's ideal. Um, so I've been trying to figure out what the bright balance is for me of something that will be enjoyable to knit. So something that's not totally new instructions, every row, very complex, not hard to get in a flow of knitting, um, but has enough um, detail in there to get a really good fit for all the sizes. So those are the things I'm thinking about and working on, working through. And I really appreciate whenever people um, tell me what they do or don't like about my patterns, what they do or don't like about knitting in general, because just the more information I can get um, helps me to understand how I can even begin to approach that question. So I wrote a whole bunch about this. Let me just see here that I actually got to everything I wanted to say. Um, Ah, yeah. So the test week will probably be, the test knit will probably be in a couple weeks. I'm going to be sending it to the tech editor next week. Um, with how it's going, it might not be complete by the time I send it to her, but I hope to have at least the body done and be started on a sleeve. Um, and then probably a little bit after Thanksgiving weekend, I'll be putting out that test call. Uh, Again, my newsletter is the best place also, not just to hear about releases, but to hear about test calls. As soon as a uh, test net is open for applications, the first thing I do is send out an email notifying people. Um, so again, be sure you're signed up for that if you're interested in ever test knitting my patterns. Um, and then I'm planning for this release, release to come out in March. Um, and I'm so excited that that's working out perfectly. I was communicating with Farmer's Daughter Fibers about what their schedule looks like and what would work best for them. And that's what they said would work best, but that's perfect because exactly what I'm envisioning for this is this being a transitional piece that can cover the time um, when it's, starting to warm up during the day, but might still be cold in the mornings and evenings. And then even living in the mountains here in Nashville, this is a piece that I would wear all summer long because um, it would cool down at night substantially to where if I was sitting out on the porch in the evening, I would probably, um, if I was wearing like a shorts and tank during the day, I would throw on a sweater. So I'm very excited to have that complete and see exactly how everything ends up tying together. Okay. This is going longer than I expected, so I'm gonna kinda zoom through these last little bits. My next sweater, which is going to be my final sweater design of the season, before I start doing some tees and tanks for the spring and summer, is going to be in this yarn, which I am so excited about. This is Candy Day from De Verum Natura, and this is a blend of wool and cotton. It is... 28% cotton. So pretty, pretty good. Majority wool, but a good percent cotton. And I really love how it feels. It's like really soft. 
feels it has a very like sweatshirty kind of feel it gets soft but not not in a fuzzy way um and then the cotton makes it have a really beautiful heathered look and i really love this soft green and this is going to be a sweater that is going to have rows of textures that texture that is made of eyelets and wrap stitches um this is something i started swatching but i was like i got other stuff to do put kind of put on hold so i don't have the final version but what i'm envisioning is it's going to be rows of eyelets but where the wrap stitches are between the eyelets looking like they're gathering the stitches away so as i always say <laughs> when i'm describing design ideas if that doesn't make any sense to you and you can't see the vision i have in mind then just check back next month and I will probably have this um, started and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And what I wanna do for that sweater with the open um, lace rose and the cotton blend yarn is to have it be a sweater that would be perfect for being a cover up, um, something like to pull on if you're going to the lake or around here, there are lots of like waterfalls that you can go swimming in, um, something that would be a great layering piece for um, spring and summertime like that. But then I also want it to be very, um, nice and finished looking that you could just wear it over tank top or bralette any day too. Um, not that it would be exclusively for that kind of use. Um, so as usual, I'm always, I'm always so excited for my next design. And then, um, but then once my next design becomes my current design, I get kind of to the mindset of being like, I just have to get this done so I can get to the next one. Um, but it's good because it motivates me to keep a good schedule. Um, but yeah, I am really knit enjoying the sweater I'm knitting right now, but I'm eager to get to the next one as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk a tiny bit about my um, New York Sheep and Wool Rhinebeck experience. Um, so this is my first time ever going. It's my first time ever going to a large knitting festival at all. I went to a sheep and wool festival in Kentucky several years ago, but I was kind of barely starting to knit at that point. Um, and it was a pretty big event, but compared to New York sheep and wool, tiny basically. Um, but that was cool, but it was just, it was just very much like a for fun weekend. I didn't expect to like talk to anyone else there. Um, I wasn't trying to do anything about knitting as work. Um, so it was a very, very different experience this time. And honestly, my main feeling was anxiety and overwhelm because a lot of people, a lot of different events, a uh, lot of crowds, a lot of stimulation, but stimulation, but um, I'm kind of taking away that for myself, I wanted that to be my uh, year to just see what's going on and then so in the future, I can kind of make more of a plan for myself. What do what am I trying to accomplish? Who am is my goal to have fun, network with people, shop for yarn, pet cute animals? I mean, it's all of the above. But I think really I realized at the end that I really wanted it to be more about networking with people than I really prioritized at the event. Um, but thank you so, so much to anyone who came up to me and said hi. Um, I approached like one or two people, but I was mainly not in a mindset to do that. But several people came up to me and talked to me and that made me so happy. Um, and even when I was at India Tangled, I was sitting down um, eating, I think. And some people sat down and I started talking to them. They're like, do you have a knitting podcast? I've just watched it. And that was so cool. So we were watching this again. Hi. Um, that was really cool. So I loved the amount that I did get to talk to other people, meet other people. Um, a, a factor for me is that I was doing like a combo family visit and fiber festival visit. Um, so I was kind of throughout the day and balancing family time and um, when different days, different amounts of my family also came to the event and I was kind of like trying to show them around and have them have fun and talk to other knitters. So I think in the future, I'll just 
go by myself and have it be this is about just meeting and connecting with other knitters um and then have my family time being dedicated family time but not trying to mix them all together um and then i'm sure if you are a person who's watching a knitting podcast for this long you already know that wool and folk was a total shit show for a lot of reasons i thought it was a mess being there but i was so overwhelmed by everything the scale of how many bad things were going on and specifically how horribly the vendors were treated it is not something I realized till afterwards, but um, lots of people have made videos and Instagram posts talking all about that. So um, I'm not the person to tell you all the details and you probably have already heard them. So I won't go into that too much. Um, yeah, but I'm definitely going to make that an annual thing. And this year was my practice run, I guess. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start wrapping up here. We are almost at a full hour, which I think this will be my longest podcast yet. So thanks for sticking with me here. Um, but I do want to tell you, so my intention is for this to be coming out on Friday. And I am having a special something going on this weekend and since you stuck with me I'll just tell you what it is I'm gonna have a one day sale on all my patterns and it's gonna be 30% off all my patterns for one day only and I'm trying my goal is to not um have sales all the time but I'm now trying to do design full-time as of recently which is very exciting but a lot um but because of the timing of how pattern releases happen, in, um, I'm setting myself up now to have at least one release per month in perpetuity, or however you say that. Um, but I'm still kind of adjusting for the past when I was not working at a fast enough rate for a pattern to come out each month. Which is just to say, I don't have a release coming out this month. Um, but I do have a release for December, uh, actually two releases for January, and then so on, at least one release per month from there on out. So I kind of just wanted to do something this month. So I'm going to just do that little quick sale. Um, and hopefully, I've also had a lot of new people finding my work through my podcast and my Instagram um, over the past little bit so I think there are a lot of people who um might not have had the opportunity when I've done a sale or release sales in the past to get my patterns with those so um this will just be open to anyone um but yeah check out my newsletter or Instagram on Saturday if you're watching this um the day that it comes out or the day afterwards and you can find the code and enjoy that and I also wanted to talk to you about something real quick before I wrap everything up. Um, so I'm going to keep doing this podcast monthly, but I'm looking into introducing a second monthly podcast or second monthly video in addition to the podcast where my podcast will be this regular update, what's going on, and then do an additional video that's on a specific theme. So my plan for next month for December is I'm gonna do one of the everything I knit in 2023, which I know a lot of people do, but I always love watching those. Every year I watch a whole bunch of those. I like seeing what people choose to knit, how many things people knit, which kind of, if someone's interested in one pattern, like what the other patterns that they're interested in and how like how each individual knitter kind of forms a wardrobe of all the available patterns out there. Um, so I always enjoy watching those. So I'm going to do one of those next month, but then I'm in, interested in continuing to do each month an additional video on a certain topic and some ideas like just starting to brainstorm some ideas are things like doing a week in my life as a knitwear designer, more kind of vloggy style throughout a week or, um, do a video where I overview different garment constructions and the pros and cons or the reasons you'd want to go with different constructions um, for different sweaters and um, 
and or doing like a totally separate video about how to choose a sweater that's going to fit you the way you want and how to choose sizing and modifications to get your best fit. Um, and then I think it would could be cool if you guys have questions, just do like a straight up Q&A one, one month or maybe once a year or something. Um, just collect questions from uh, you guys. And But um, I'm bringing this all up because the whole point is just to make something that you guys might be interested in watching. So please, please, please take a second. Let me know if any of those ideas sound interesting to you or if you have a totally different idea of something you'd like to see me do, a breakout video where I get... Um, you know, spend anywhere from like a half hour to an hour diving into one specific topic. Um, so yeah, be sure to comment and let me know. I um, have absolutely loved reading every single one of your comments. It's helping me to get a bit more comfortable in front of the camera to be like, there are real people watching this and they're saying nice things to me and they like to listen to me talk about knitting for an hour or so. Thank you so much for being one of those people and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see next month when my video comes out and then also that little annual roundup video that I talked to you about. And until then, happy knitting.